Hello and welcome to the American Massage and Chiropractic Conference pre-conference broadcast series on One Concept Radio. I'm Felicia Brown and I'll be your host for this interview and series. This is one of several broadcasts with the presenters and experts who are appearing in Atlanta, Georgia, May 17th through 19th, 2013, and who are brought to you by One Concept. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the 2013 American Massage and Chiropractic Conference sponsors, Massage Warehouse Script, MPA Media, the Chiropractic Leadership Alliance, 100-Year Lifestyle, MindFluence, ABMP, BioFreeze, and Massage Envy Careers for making this year's event possible. Our special guest today is Dr. Dennis Buckley. Dennis and I will be talking about his classes, Creating a Revolution of Lifetime Chiropractic Lifestyles in Your Communities with Dr. Buckley, Dr. Eric Plasker, and Dr. Guy Reichman, and SCORE, Student Chiropractors on the Road to Excellence, a special presentation for student chiropractors. But first, let me tell you a little bit about Dennis. Dr. Dennis Buckley is a chiropractor in Pasadena, California, and is the co-owner of Health Advantage, which uses chiropractic acupuncture and massage. He has been practicing in Pasadena for the past 20 years. He is a past president of the California Chiropractic Association and past chair of the Pasadena Chamber of Commerce. Through his company, Performance Advantage consults with vendors to the healing arts, provides consulting services to healthcare practitioners, and helps chiropractor, acupuncturist, and massage therapists market and build their practices. He is also finishing his first two books, Score, Student Chiropractors on the Road to Excellence, and An Incomplete Education, What You Forgot to Learn in College. Dr. Buckley is 55 years old, newly married, has a 25-year-old daughter who's serving in the U.S. Navy, and is the extra dad to two boys ages 15 and 13. Dennis, welcome back to the American Massage and Chiropractic Conference pre-conference broadcast series on One Concept Radio. As always, I want to thank you for making time to talk with me about the event and about your classes. Thank you, Felicia. It is so good to be back talking about this exciting event. Can't wait to share. Well, of course, we're honored um, to have you, and I'm, I'm definitely interested in hearing more about your classes. But before we get into that, I'd really like to get your thoughts on the idea of creating community. This is something I've been asking all the presenters about because part of the focus at this year's conference is to create community by adding a community room where the attendees can actually visit with speakers more personally and learn more about how they themselves can make a real difference at home and in our professions. So, of course, Dennis, I'd like to know why you think it's important to create community in the chiropractic and healing arts world, our practices or businesses, and, of course, at the conference. Well, first and foremost, there is a world out there that is in desperate need of what we have to offer. And if we can offer it in a way that is cooperative, collaborative, and also beneficial, we can change our communities, we can change the world. Now, one of the things that is problematic is many practitioners uh, live in a very competitive mindset, meaning that the pie out there is only so big, uh, and if someone's getting a lot, they're getting less. Therefore, it becomes a very competitive mindset, and everybody tends, tends to isolate, and it's me versus them mentality. That is not working <laughs> at all. Whereas if you have a creative mindset, which is what this is creating, where you have collaboration, where people sit down and work with each other and learn from each other, basically create for themselves what we call a third alternative mindset, coming up with solutions that are better than we could ever come up on our own. We can basically make the pie more delicious, more nutritious, and plenty for all. So we can serve more people, serve them uh, better, and also do it in a spirit of cooperation where it makes it a lot of fun to practice. Nothing worse than struggling for practice, trying to bring to the world what you have to offer and not being able to deliver it because of the fact that no one is seeking you. However, by working in co collaboration with other healthcare practitioners like mine itself in a more natural way, which people are looking for, we'll be able to meet the demands of the community. And by having this community room, we can sit down with each other and really pay, focus on our strengths, focus on our the things that are um, similar to each other, 
and also what's different and how we can complement each other. So this is a great step to just to learn and to really basically get and come together face to face uh, in, our, in our energy fields with other people and create something really, really special. I think this community room is not only going to be successful, it's going to be a huge success. It's really going to set um, your uh, the one concept uh, conferences apart from the other ones, this community room, by creating this uh, sense of community and get, getting rid of the competition and becoming creative to help a lot of people. So I'm very excited to uh, be part of it and also see it in action. Well, thanks, Dennis. And, you know, you and I have talked in the past about that idea of <clears throat> collaboration and helping each other succeed so that we can all do a better job with our clients. So, um, you know, I'm wholeheartedly behind everything that you said. And um, I, I think the community room is going to be a great addition to the conference, uh, just helping people to see um, that new way of thinking and, and getting out of the, you know, the the difficult competitive mindset I do and do what I call cooperative competition where yeah maybe I am still trying to set myself apart but I'm willing to help you succeed um, and set yourself apart so that we can all offer our best selves and our best offerings to the clients and the community and just make everybody have a better day and week in life yes and that's what it's really about it's like focus on what's in the best interest of your client or your patient what's in their best interest when you put that first um, you can always do the right thing. Without a doubt. So thinking about best interests, I know I think you've actually probably by now completed the book score and have actually created a wonderful program for the student chiropractors that are coming to this conference. And that's one of the things that I, I want to hear about. I'd like you to just give us an overview about that program, SCORE, um, Student Chiropractors on the Road to Excellence, and let us know what those folks can expect out of that day. Well, SCORE is done. It is published. It is being distributed. And it's being reviewed by uh, practitioners and students. And uh, the feedback has been very positive. The SCORE program, Student Chiropractors on the Road to Excellence, uh, what you forgot to learn in chiropractic college, is the parallel curriculum that goes along with the formal education. If you're, and, and actually the, the program even applies to massage therapists and acupuncture, because when you're going to school to become a chiropractor, to become a massage therapist, learning your trade in acupuncture, there also has to be a parallel education going on and how to be successful so that you can, a, are able to do what you've been trained to do and be successful at it, meaning being in business and being successful and being a uh, relative in the community. One of the problems we found is that most uh, practitioners, when they graduate, are ill-prepared for the realities of being in business and building a practice. What I did was I interviewed, I've been studying success for over 20 years, and I was really, really kind of perplexed why everybody goes to the same school or take the same program, but you get such varied results. And uh, so I interviewed some of the most successful chiropractors in the world. And really, I've, I've gone worldwide now, interviewed chiropractors in the world. And I found out uh, a very simple thing. What were they like in chiropractic college? Because one thing that was common to all successful chiropractors, unsuccessful chiropractors, mediocre chiropractors, you know, authors, everything, they all went to chiropractic college. And so... I want to know what were they like in chiropractic college? How did they make the transition from student to doctor, doctor to successful doctor, and what is maintaining their passion and their success today? And what it came down to is they had certain habits. They had they did certain things that other people didn't do or refused to do. And they also did it in a way that they really were um, focusing on from an inside out type of success pathway. They worked hard on themselves, and they disciplined themselves, and they put into place habits that would serve them well. And so what happens is this is the compilation of all that research from all these people, and it's put into a way that students today can start developing the habits of the most successful chiropractors in the world. And this actually is applicable to massage therapists and uh, acupuncturists because it's based on principles. And it's also uh, appropriate for doctors 
that are in practice, that are new in practice, or struggling, or just want to get better about how they measure up against the best uh, of in, in the world and what they can do to improve themselves, therefore improving their practices, improving their effectiveness. And it's a it, it's a it's a it's a it's a fun book to read because the fact is that the doctors that I have given the book back to and said, could you please read this? They've come back to me and said, this is it. This is the straightforward, simple way about how you can be successful. It's not that difficult. And I've given it to people that I felt needed the book. And they looked at it and they said, it's nice. Well, they basically said, I'm not happy with where I'm at, but I'm not going to change my habits. Right. But I'm not going to, and therefore I'm not going to change my future. The problem is, is that, you know, you know, what, what we do on a regular basis, our habits make us or break us, and everybody's got habits. So you might as well, if you're going to have habits, you might as well have good ones. So it's been very exciting to uh, put this together and share this. And so the students that will come to this, they can be mentored by the best chiropractors in the world, find out what they did, model that, and create for themselves success. One of the words that I heard you say as you were talking about that was um, ill-prepared. And I'm curious if you could just elaborate on that a little bit. You know, what what do you mean when you say they're ill-prepared when they come out into the world, they don't know what they're getting into? Because, I mean, I remember when I was in school for massage, I really thought I knew everything. Uh, you know, I almost to a point said, oh, I don't even need to go to class. I already know how to do massage. Um, and I know what my experience was. But what what would you say, you know, is are some common um, ways that people are ill-prepared or, un, um, or not ready for what awaits them out of school? Well, in interviewing a lot of the doctors, this is what they said, that they were ill-prepared for the, for the realities of being in business. Um, they were also ill-prepared about how to build a practice, meaning they knew what to do once a patient came into the office, but they knew nothing about how to get them into the office or how to keep them from disappearing from the office meaning the networking, the marketing, the PR, the sales part of the equation or the business side of it, they were ill-prepared. They felt um, that if they were really good at being whatever they were, a chiropractor, an acupuncturist, massage, if they were focused on that, everything else would take care of itself. Mm -hmm. The problem was is they got out into practice, they were ready to heal the world, and no one knew who they were. Because this forced them, they had to actually go out and meet people. They had to be able to communicate with people. They had to be able to connect with people. They had to know how to, to put together a, 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 a treatment plan, how to basically pro provide a communication pathway that would not, I hate, I don't want to use the word sell, but basically, um, c c complete the transaction so people would be willing to buy what they had. So they were ill prepared for, uh, the things that they really didn't think were that important, now they find out it's very important, especially if they are a business owner. Okay, that's a whole other story about how to set up a business, about employees, about management. They had to learn how to wear different hats. But the number one thing they were all prepared for is how to build a practice. How did they get people in the door? And that was really a tough one for a lot of them because it was uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable for them to be a, to be networking, to go actually talk to people, to have people challenge them on their beliefs. So that's one of the things that we really wanted to get across, and this is true of all of all professions. If you're a chiropractor, if you're a massage therapist, if you're an acupuncturist, the number one business you're in is not healthcare. The number one business you're in is marketing, right. because if no one knows who you are, you're wasted upon the world. Well, you know I agree with that as a marketing coach. I definitely <laughs> see that as an issue, and I, I actually talk to the massage therapists and other service providers that I work with, some chiropractors, some estheticians, that massage is an, I mean, uh, marketing is another modality that you have to embrace. It's the modality that complements everything else that you've been trained to do because without it, you're not going to be able to get people on your table or in your room to be able to do the rest of the modalities. And if you learn to embrace it that way, you know, to keep your skills fresh and to apply it with every client, you know, in every situation, there's all different kinds of strategies, obviously. But if you're continually applying that along with the other modalities, you're going to be much more successful than if you're just doing your quote-unquote techniques, um, hands-on techniques, 
and you know you're you're likely to be missing a lot of people that could be served by what you do if you're not using the marketing modality. Exactly. I like that. The mo- it's another modality. That's a great way to put it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I thought it was fairly original. <laughs> I know lots of people don't don't agree with me on it. You know, I see the people go, "What?" You know, but I just want to fix people. I'm like, well, well, don't you need the people to fix in order to do that? <laughs> so, um, absolutely. Well, um, if you know, there are some student chiropractors listening that won't be at the at the conference. We we wish everybody would come, but I know that some people won't. What is there a tip that you could offer them right now as students? Something that they could do to be successful um, once they graduate or just in finishing their student career. One of the things they can do that's really simple is during their career, go visit lots of chiropractors' offices and ask questions of the doctor such as, how did you build your practice? How do you get new patients? What was the biggest challenge you faced getting out of school? When you came, when you, how did you decide to practice here? You know, and oh, have you used management companies? Basically, visit lots of chiropractors' offices and see different models about how people run their practice, how they market, how they, uh, you know, communicate, what tools do they use in the office? You know, Make a study out of success by studying chiropractors. And you can learn a lot from anybody you visit. You can learn what not to do. You can learn what to do. And so what that will actually do is allow you to basically tap into maybe an area that really, really appeals to you or you may resonate with a doctor that is really, really seems to be doing what you're doing. And then that, that takes to the next step, which is just find a mentor, someone that will be your kind of guide that you can check in with, that you can uh, that hold you accountable. And so it's a two-step prop. Visit lots of offices and find a mentor and, and and then basically model that mentor of somebody that's doing what you want to do and doing it in a successful way. Model what they're doing. Find out what they're doing. It'll be a nice little template to take you from wherever you're at to where you want to go a lot faster. And then your best job. And then when you become successful, you become a mentor to other students. <clears throat> And, you know, as we're switching, going to switch gears into the other class, I do want to follow up on that point, though, the mentoring. Why is being mentored and being a mentor so important? I mean, I, I think obviously you've gotten all this wisdom in your book from all these chiropractors, um, but why does that matter, having that having that relationship or, or being that person to another um, professional or student? Well, one, it's, it's quite inspirational because you're seeing what's possible. You know, you're actually visibly seeing what is possible. You as a student may have a dream about, okay, I want to practice. I want to live here. I want to practice there. I want to own this. I want to be able to, do, to achieve all these things and, you know, and help the world. And, but it's in your mind. But if you can actually see someone who's actually doing that, it becomes much more real. And then you can also find out how they did it. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can find out a pathway that has been already proven and successful and be able to f- follow it. And so, you know, if, if, if I gave you a, uh, if I gave you a, uh, uh, an invitation and I said, Hey, Felicia, I'd really like you to come over and have dinner one night over at my house, you know, bring your husband and we'll come down, we'll have together. And now you're over in North Carolina and I'm in Los Angeles and you say, I'd love to come. And I say, okay, I'll see you Saturday at 630. What's missing? Well, there's directions how to get here. See, you could you could come to California and you could look through 38 million people and you might find me. But then if I said I'm in Los Angeles area in the county, then all of a sudden now it's down to six or, or ten million people. But if I said, hey, I'm up in Chatsworth, well, that takes it down to about 200,000. The more details I give you about how to get here, the more successful you'll be in getting here, and you'll get here in a proper time and you'll enjoy the experience. And so I think a lot of um, chiropractors and students, uh, they really um, feel that they need to do it on their own, which is one way of doing it. But it's also very, very expensive. It can be very painful. If you had a roadmap of someone who's already doing what you've done and you're able to find it, you can enjoy the, you can get there a lot faster, enjoy the experience, and therefore that mentorship actually is a way of also holding you accountable for you doing what you're supposed to do. And then basically, it's what's, what really has progressed 
civilization through time. It's called passing it on, where you pass on the knowledge of what you've gained to future generations so that they can pass it on to future generations and keeps the things going. Well, I think those are, those are all great points. And, um, you know, I mean, if we go back to the idea of community, part of what we're talking about is mentoring and how to make a difference. So we definitely are behind that as a conference. But I'll tell you something, just my own word of wisdom to chime in with what Dennis is saying. Um, as a As a new massage therapist about 20 years ago, I got out of school and had my own ideas about the way I wanted to do things. In fact, I worked for a few different people while I was getting my feet wet and, you know, getting experience. But I still, I had in my mind ideas of how I wanted to do everything. And I had a number of uh, clients that were actually sort of de facto business advisors. And and all of them pretty much gave me the same advice over and over again. You know, make sure you're paying yourself first. Make sure you're you're um, charging enough or that you're, you know, getting um, – like I was bringing on people, make sure you're getting enough from them being there. That so you know that type of thing. In other words, protect yourself first, protect the business first, make sure that's covered. And I said to every single one of them, "Oh, I know what I'm doing. I have a different way. I'm going to do things. I have a different way." And um, a few years later, when I had to change how I paid people and how I, how I ran the business because oh, I didn't protect myself in the business as I should have and wasn't making a money or a profit. I looked back and I thought, man, if I'd only listened to them, how much money I would have saved. And there's a number of examples there. So, you know, as a consultant, I often tell people, you know, if you work with me for a couple of hours and, you know, it might cost you a few hundred dollars, but it could save you thousands and so countless hours of stress and frustration and heartbreak because I've been where you are. I've already made the mistakes for you. You don't need to go and do it again. I promise it's not going to be any more fun for you than it was for me to um, find out, oh, it's really expensive if you don't file your payroll taxes properly or whatever. <laughs> you know. So I, I totally agree with you, and I think those are great suggestions. I, I remember the state that says if, if, if you think an expert is expensive, try hiring an amateur. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's that's perfect. I might have to I might have to repeat that somewhere sometime soon. Um so Dennis, the other class that you're involved in is actually um with a panel. That's with Dr. Eric Plasker and Dr. Guy Reichman, and you're going to be sharing some wisdom in creating a revolution of lifetime chiropractic lifestyles in your communities. Um I'd really like you to just tell us a little bit about what we can expect from you. Um, in that presentation, and you know more about it with what the other doctors will be presenting. That's great. But what can we what can we expect from that class? Well, I'm going to be setting the stage for Dr. Plasker and Dr. Reichman, and I'm going to be talking about the state of healthcare where it is today, and also what are the skills that are going to be needed uh, as a practitioner, uh, whether you're new in practice, you're a student, or you've been uh, wanting to change of seasoned practitioner about what's going to be necessary from you as an individual. Who are you going to have to be and what are you going to have to do to have a relevant role in the changing healthcare paradigm that is basically emerging. Uh, one of the things that was uh, very, very crazy, I read the other day that that they said that uh, healthcare insurance premium costs over the next, by next year may actually double uh, or costs will go up by 50 to 100 percent. And um, one of the reasons they asked for that is they said, well, the affordable health care bill will be causing that, which I thought was kind of ironic. An affordable health care bill is going to actually cause premiums to double. And so, you know, it's forcing, uh, it, it, it's an actual insane out there. So how can we as practitioners help provide for people an alternative about what has traditionally been the quote the health care or crisis illness care system in this country. Well, I think this is actually going to set the stage for a great opportunity for people to really learn about how to take better care of themselves, employing natural ways, the things that they can do on a regular basis. So I think it's going to force people to be more responsible and more prudent with their health care dollars. And people aren't going to be spent. It comes out of their pocket. They're going to be spending it on things that are um, really more valuable and effective. And we know from empirical evidence the effectiveness of chiropractic, massage, uh, and uh, acupuncture 
either treating certain conditions or improving health and preventing illness and disease. So I think that's really going to take uh, precedence. So what we're going to be talking about is I'm going to be setting the stage about what the doctor has to do and what they have to become and the, and how to get there. And then Dr. Plasker, who's an incredible speaker, is going to be talking about, you know, the opportunities and then Dr. Reichman is going to be get take it to a whole new level. So it's going to build. So I'm it's honored to be on the same platform with those two wonderful gentlemen and and doctors and healers and and authors. And so I'm going to basically just tee it up for them and let them knock it out of the park. Well, one thing you said though, Dennis, kind of intrigues me, and I'm sure people listening are are thinking the same thing. You mentioned, you know, who you have to be. I wonder how does, you know, who a person is affect how sexual, successful they will be in practice? Well, you know something? One thing you have to do is you have to be the example, not the warning. So in this, in this healthcare system, you know, people who are sick or injured, who are vibrating at a lower frequency are going to seek the help of people who are vibrating at a higher frequency. Meaning, you don't go get advice from people more screwed up than you are. <laughs> and one of the things that you need to do is basically, as you as a practitioner, you need to embody and live what you're talking. you got to walk your walk and talk your talk. And so you actually have to become that which you are espousing as what other people should do. Because that basically gives you a great integrity with them and, and, with, and with, with yourself. But it also is you're the example that people aspire to. And people are going to gravitate to the people who they want to be like. Just like a student may gravitate to a mentor of someone who's doing what they're doing because it inspires them, it energizes them, people are going to be... Uh, gravitating towards people who are have what they want, which would be abundant health, energy, well, uh, wellness, vital, vitality, all those different things. But you can't basically sell something you're not yourself. I mean, if, if, how much integrity would you have of talking about somebody to lose weight when you're 100 pounds overweight? Right. It doesn't work that way anymore. And there's been just been too much. There's been too much lack of integrity in the uh, healthcare community out there. And so to, in the new healthcare uh, model, you know, you doctor, you massage therapist, you acupuncturist, you need to be on practicing what you preach and you need to be, a, you, you need to be able to espousing to everyone else and, and, and show it visibly that this is what's possible. You must be the leader of yourself. And this is what it really comes down to. You must lead yourself. You must be able to discipline and master yourself so you can lead others into a pathway of improved health and lifestyle, uh, uh, improved lifestyle and uh, abundant health. Without a doubt, I agree with you. And, um, you know, one thing I'm always amazed, you know, I teach all over um, the country and in Canada and other places sometimes. And, um, I always will ask my students, I, I have mostly massage therapists, but sometimes chiropractors, sometimes estheticians or acupuncturists, sometimes other disciplines. But in particular for those that are hands-on, um, I'll say to them, you know, how often do you get the work that you do? And, um, you know, just the other day I was having a massage at a class or in between sessions and was talking to the massage therapist who was working on me and she said, oh, I haven't had a massage in like three months. So, well, how can you how can you expect your clients to listen to you when you say, oh, you know, I I recommend massage at least once a month or or more when you aren't doing it? And I will say for sure, I, you know, I've had the experience of both things. One that people respond to the fact that I say, oh yes, I do get massage as often as I suggest to you. I get massage at least at least a bare minimum once a month. And when I'm really in you know practicing heavily or when I'm training for a triathlon or something, I'm getting massage probably twice a week. And perhaps other disciplines too, maybe some acupuncture, maybe an adjustment, maybe a pedicure, who knows. But I'm definitely <laughs> following what I'm saying to them. And of late, I'll, I will say that I've really noticed, you know, we all talk about people, you know, you need to be aware of how you're using your body and maybe take breaks in the middle of the day to get up from your desk or what have you. And that's something that I kind of, I can be sort of lax on, I'll be honest. But as I, and my practice has been really busy for the last few months. And I've been saying, okay, I'm going to take 10 minutes and I'm going to do some yoga. 
and I'm going to, you know, or I'm going to lay down on the floor and do some stretching for my back, or I'm going to put an ice pack on my back, whatever's bothering me at the moment. And the difference that it makes for me, and then to be able to share that with clients, you know, they're like, wow, really? Oh, well, if Felicia can do it, you know, in the middle of her day, I guess I can. And and I've had definitely many people say, you get a massage once a week? I want to do that. So (laughs) totally in agreement with you on that. We sure agree a lot. That's good. Huh? I know. It's too bad you live all the way in California. We'd just be like <laughs> agreeing with each other all the time and smiling happy people every single day. I like you. You like me. We're buds. Sorry, That's y'all. Right. A little personal moment here, but we're lucky. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Dennis, um, this class with Dr. Plasker and um, Dr. Reichman sounds like it's going to be amazing. Is there one tip that you can share um, with people listening about how they can um, – make changes in their practice right now? Well, one of the things they really need to know, and it starts with the end in mind, What if your practice was ultimately the successful, the best practice you'd ever want, what does it look like? I mean, how would you know you got there to success? So maybe that might be the first step is to sit down and basically do a little dreaming and write down, my successful practice looks like this. It sees this many people. It generates this much money. It's got this type of aesthetics. It has this many employees. Here's what we're, here's our mission and vision and purpose. I mean, what does it look like? If you're just out there going like, okay, I'm in practice and God, I hope it works out. You know, that's not very, very, uh, uh, empowering, nor is it very, very wise because you can really get fooled. But one thing they may want to do is, is basically sit down and figure out exactly if they had the perfect lifestyle practice, what would it look like? And then you work back from there. Well, what would I need to do to create that? You know, do I need help? Do I need coaching? Do I need consultants? Do I need to work harder? Do I need to recommit? Do I need to take better care of myself? What are the steps that are needed to do? Now, the best thing they can really do if they want to create this is they need to attend the conference. (laughs) Because at that conference in May in Atlanta, you're going to basically hear from many people that can inspire you and also give you – um their knowledge and their expertise about helping you get to where you want to go. So I think that's one of the best things they can do. But in the meantime, they should start thinking about what their ideal lifestyle and practice, what does it look like? And I think a lot of people have may have done that at some point in their life and they got caught up in the minutia of trying just to run a daily practice so they really don't know why they're doing this anymore. So they got to get recommitted to their mission and purpose and their vision. And what does it look like? What is the outcome? Well, I think that's a great idea. I think getting clear on what it is you're going after so you know when you get there. Going back to the directions so I know mm-hmm. how to get to your house for dinner. Perfect. That's right. Perfect. <laughs> and I, one that I hope people will take action on. Dennis, um, in the meantime, I want to make sure that everyone listening knows how to get in touch with you um, and you know, if they want to find out more information about all the different things you do and, of course, get your book. Um, can you share your contact information with us? Sure. If you, uh, I, hey, I'll give you my cell number. This is the easiest way to get a hold of me. It's area code 626-991-8877. And, uh, that's it contacts me directly. Uh, for students that are interested in the SCORE program, they go to www.scorechiro.com. And, uh, there they have a chance to actually get the book. They have a chance to get um, interviews with leading uh, experts in the field of business, marketing, entrepreneurship, communication, and um, and a lot of other bonuses for free. And I'll, I'll give the book for them if they help cover the cost of shipping. I will get that to them for free. Also, um, uh, um, let's see where else. That's probably the best thing right now. I'm actually uh, changing. Uh, the program a little bit i'm changing the name of the scorebook it'll still exist but it'll have a it'll have a new title it'll be called the hole in your diploma what you forgot to learn in blank chiropractic college acupuncture school massage school whatever and but this will be the score edition so but right now it's www.scorechiro.com you can also go to amazon.com if you just want to get the book and have it uh a ship to yourself. You can buy it on there. It's a score. Student chiropractors on the road to excellence. 
fantastic. Well, I'm sure after listening to the broadcast today that everyone listening has come to the conference and registered for one or both of the classes, the first one being Creating a Revolution of Lifetime Chiropractic Lifestyles in Your Communities uh, with Dr. Dennis Buckley, Dr. Eric Plasker, and Dr. Guy Reichman. And then, of course, SCORE, Student Chiropractors on the Road to Excellence, a special presentation just for chiropractic students. Dennis, thanks as always for taking time to talk with me and for being a part of the 2013 American Massage and Chiropractic Conference. We are well, thank definitely you. glad to have you there. Oh, it's always great to talk to you and so looking forward to seeing everybody in Atlanta. Well, we want to see everybody in Atlanta too, so Dennis, I'm going to switch gears and make sure everyone listening knows how to get involved in the uh, conference. The American Massage and Chiropractic Conference is one of the largest exhibitions of massage and chiropractic products continuing education and business opportunities for practitioners of both disciplines. This year's conference will feature over 100 exhibitors, continuing education classes of one hour, three hour, and one day workshops, including Dennis's. Uh, Other events during the weekend include Friday night's famous meet and greet, where the theme is disco, and then the One Concept Gala on Saturday night. The new conference value pass is just $87 and includes access to all one-hour CE presentations, the trade show, contests, events, community events, and more. And this year, we are also introducing the One Concept Pass, your ticket to full conference access. The One Concept Pass is just $349 or 299 if you purchase early and includes full-day technique, business and philosophy sessions with Steve Hoffman, David Fletcher, Troy Dukowitz, Lyle Coca, Dan Yachter, and Sharon Gorman, half-day radiology with John Taylor, three-hour sessions with Dr. Eric Plasker, Guy Reichman, and Dennis Buckley, and one-hour classes with Kara Bailey, Steve Weininger, Matthew Norton, and more. And CEs are included for chiropractors. Also, the One Concept Pass covers lunch each day, as well as access to the trade show, the chance to participate in special events, community opportunities, and contests with literally thousands of dollars in prizes. For students, the conference will be offering a special student program, SCORE, Student Chiropractors on the Road to Excellence, on Friday, May 17th from 2.30 to 4.30. This day is dedicated to chiropractic students who are currently enrolled in school or who will graduate in 2013 and includes access to the opening session and trade show on Friday. All of this is happening at the Sheraton Atlanta, and I definitely suggest you make plans to stay there if at all possible. Single or double rates are just $129 a night, but space is limited, so make your reservations now. Also, MPA Media is printing the American Massage and Chiropractic Conference event program inside their magazines, Massage Today, Dynamic Chiropractic, and Chiropractic Insights. These will be given out at the conference and distributed throughout the U.S. to over 133,000 practitioners. So if you are a vendor or educator who's listening in today and you'd like to get some great exposure for your class or product, please contact MPA Media for details on being a part of the conference program.